artist from the rock or metal world do something like that, people automatically think that is that the result is gonna be like a mix of these two things, rock and mm -hmm. classical music. But if we hear symphonize, it's more straightforward classical with a, like yeah. a like a new arrangement of your songs. So did you yeah. decide to do this way because actually rock and classical music you already done with Jet and Storm? Yeah, exactly. It's just, that's true. Um, if you leave out the bands, like you don't have elect uh, like electric guitar or guitar solos or drums, for instance, then you have a whole different uh, atmosphere. And I, I, like you said, it, it's it's just really totally different when you really really make arrangements for those songs uh, to 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 let them be played by an uh, an, uh, an orchestra is very different from when you still hear the band and then the orchestra always gets kind of into the background like you you hear some strings and it and it all becomes really more beautiful but now there is like the emphasis is really on the on the orchestra and the arrangements in the songs you know <laughs> right so uh any arrangement in particular just make you some give you some ghost bumps like you heard the arrangement and say wow <laughs> Yeah, to be honest with a lot of songs, but, um, you know, I love the the arrangements for the Vuur songs. Yeah. Um, because Vuur is, the, those are like the most heavy songs on, the, on uh, you know, in, in, uh, in initially. Um, and like what they did, for instance, what they did with, there's like a long guitar solo in... Uh, Rio, I think. Yeah. Um, and um, they they arranged the whole guitar solo w for the orchestra. So there's like flutes and violins playing this electric guitar solo. And when I heard that, because in the other song they left out the solo, they they just went on to the next part. And here they arranged the whole solo with the whole orchestra and. And that was like, I thought that was like epic. So I told our guitar player, like, when you come see the show, uh, listen to the guitar show, because it will <laughs> blow your mind, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Right. So um, this was two shows that I uh, did in, in Holland, right, mm -hmm. who, who were recorded. But as you are becoming, uh, well, 20 year, 25 years an artist next year, um, have you thought of actually doing a tour in Europe? Uh, having not the whole orchestra, but maybe some part of it. Yeah, it, it is a logical step, isn't it? To, yeah. to have a, a diminished orchestra and to, to tour. Although, even though with half orchestra or even a chamber orchestra is is very expensive um, to tour. And touring is already quite expensive, you know. So, therefore... That it doesn't happen so much unless you are like a really big artist and there's a lot of money involved um, then it's uh, it's very much doable so obviously I would love to, uh, to to tour but however we came up with the idea to next year so maybe end 2019 to do this again with new songs um, with more shows And we might do like just more shows in Holland, but maybe some German or whatever. But it's so we will continue working together. But like a proper tour, man, like only the bus with all those like orchestra members is <laughs> so expensive to tour. Well, the so other the other thing that you can do just to go outside Holland is um, to well pay an orchestra in the city where you are playing, for example, in right. Germany. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And prepare some shows. That's true, though. That's true. That's 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 a, a thing. I I know that's been done before. Like, then, uh, and that's a good idea as well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you if your plan is to do again this, uh, as you mentioned, and and it will be to record it again as well. Not sure. Maybe if the songs like yeah, obviously we will probably play new songs. Uh, newer songs or, or different songs, whatever. Uh, it is interesting to, to record again. However, it won't be as special as this one, of course. But but maybe, yeah, maybe if this one, if people really like this, 
thing, you know, me with an orchestra and, and all the old songs and everything. Yeah. Then why not, you know, make part two? I, I'm, I'm <laughs> not sure what, what to do. I'm also working with another orchestra for for the coming year. Like it's a little bit smaller, like a string orchestra. Right. So I'm doing kind of like I'm working with a brass band uh, next year somewhere. Yeah. So I'm doing kind of I'm kind of getting into you know people are asking me like you know which participants so i'm kind of getting into this whole orchestra and brass orchestra thing lately so who knows you know okay so you put also voice to songs from other bands as, as a guest musician i don't know i remember songs from uh, anathema or mm -hmm. in the last uh, morpheus album you also have a song so mm -hmm. have you thought of including also this uh guess uh, musician songs that you did or it's gonna be only your projects actually uh, no I think uh, well actually I'm doing something uh, a little bit different but I'm going because to, to celebrate my 25 years of professional musicianship a little bit more I'm doing uh, like 43 uh, acoustic shows in Holland actually all in <laughs> um, Holland yeah it's it's like a theater tour yeah um, And so I'm doing that um, in Holland, and I'm doing a lot of shows with uh, Punto, our guitar player. Yeah. And I'm doing a lot, like a lot more songs from those 25 years. So then I will include songs with Devin, um, Devin Townsend, and Anathema, and Gentle Storm, and Lorraineville, and everything, and Gathering, and whatever. So, so, so I will. To, and I will record that as well. So I'm also released, like next year, I will release uh, like an album with all the acoustic versions of these older songs. So, so, so yeah, so that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 25 years is a lot of years for being in the music business. Um, and as you say, you were not only in one band in these 25 years. So, um, you know, when a, when a band or a musician release an album, they always say that their last album is the best album they recorded, which they should feel that way. You know, um, in your case, in projects, your last project you have heard is a bird, right? Uh, would you say that you're going to have this project for your most heavy songs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like everything I do, because I really formed the band because I wanted to also sometimes just release like more heavy music just by myself because I'm like you said I'm doing a lot with Amorphis with Devin with Arin it's all heavy but it's not my own yeah and so whatever I do heavy now I have like a platform for it so right. so if um, we'll just you know we'll just stick around and do some heavy stuff every now and then and so but that feels good and then under my own name I can do all these like classical and acoustic stuff and then it's more clear you know people sometimes they get confused like Agordanik and and the whole thing like <laughs> like what you know what what should we focus on and now it's like focused like it's either Vuur heavy or or my own it's it's you know less heavy it's, it's right. more of like acoustic stuff yeah Great. So my my question was that um, now that you have the the album from Bird Out and you have tour with with it, and you have seen the reactions from fans, and uh, now that you have some time to think what you have done with these songs and uh -huh. um, live and on studio, um, do you still feel that it was a good decision? I think are you still in love in that with that project? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I I, I kind of want to. Um, um, I kind of want to do both, so the the heavy stuff and the and the more uh, acoustic stuff. What's that? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I do an interview. <laughs> um, and and so I, I I probably just like switch every now and then to Vuur and then to uh, and then to you know an acoustic album a Vuur album. Yeah. Acoustic album. So yeah. you don't think that everything is suitable for your fans? I mean, like, if someone likes your voice or you as a musician, you don't think that they can listen to Agua de Nike next to Burr, next to The Gentle Storm? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose so. There's, like, a lot of people, they kind of follow, 
follow whatever I'm doing. So they, and I think like mostly, uh, to be honest, um, people who love metal and who are very much into metal and into Vuur and into the old gathering and Devin, they are really open-minded. So they listen to prog, they listen to metal, but they also listen to the acoustic stuff. And a lot of acoustic stuff I'm doing is also like a version of the metal songs I always do. So, um, so they they kind of it's kind of easy for a metal audience to switch to uh, the classical uh, shows or to the acoustic shows. Yeah. And and so uh, the other way around, sometimes people just just follow my. Um, my acoustic stuff and I do a lot more in Holland I'm, I'm a little bit more on television for instance and also I have a little bit of a mainstream following here and they are go- kind of going for the, the more quiet stuff you know yeah <laughs> and a, a lot of those guys and now of course we have a good metal scene in Holland too so they kind of follow everything so I'm just blessed with an audience that is kind of open to everything yeah and I can just really express myself and, and sing my heart out and and that's just so nice you know it's it's I'm one of the few I think Devin and those guys one of the few artists that that are blessed with such an audience you know yeah well talking about the scene in Holland actually um, uh, this is gonna be my first year that I'm going to uh, Rodburn festival which you have yeah, there oh, cool. Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of friends are going every year, but this is going to be my first. So, um, uh, so, and I was thinking, like, you doing 25 years as a musician next year, it wouldn't be cool that you have some role in that festival because your music is almost related to the things that they put out there. Yeah, that's true. And I, and I know uh, Rodwin always has uh, has this uh, this thing where they do something, like, special, right, with a band uh, yeah. reuniting or... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that would have been perfect, but um, uh, but I'm not part of it this year. I hope to, anyway, play once in my lifetime on this really special festival because it's something else, you know. It's like always, like, then it's done, and then the next day, within 15 minutes, it's sold out again for the next year, so it's, it's really... Pretty, pretty epic, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So, um, 25 years are too many years for taking decisions, especially in a music business that is ever changing, you know. So, um, if you have to put in balance good decisions that you have made with your career and bad decisions, do you have a lot of bad decisions that you regret, maybe? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure because, yeah, of course, sometimes you make. Uh, stupid decisions or you spend too much money on something or you go in business with the wrong people or you know this every musician can tell you the same story the same mistakes um, but I have to say you also learn so much from from falling on your ass you know <laughs> so so sometimes you, you learn like how not to do it the, 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 the next time or um, you know you, you learn a lot about people you learn a lot about doing business for instance yeah. but also musically you can make a wrong decision or just step into the wrong project or whatever but I never feel I mean I, I don't like it I don't like making mistakes but I never feel regret because I, I, you always take something positive from it you know and Yeah. Right. So in these 25 years, have you ever thought of quitting music? Actually, I mean, like uh, doing mm. doing something else besides. Not really. I, I do sometimes think it's a heavy world to be in. It's uh, There's a lot of responsibility. Um, I live from the... Oh, super. Thank you. Wow. Like, I'm getting dinner. <laughs> <laughs> So, so there's a lot of responsibility. I live from music, so me and my husband, we do this together, and he's doing management, production, all these things. And we have a son, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, money things are difficult, and, you know, you feel responsible. And, and it's a lot of hard work, but I love it so much. I love singing, I love writing music, I love talking about it, like just now, you know, yeah. to you. Um, I, I love almost all elements of, of, of this business and and so very sometimes when I'm super tired and everything's going wrong and there's no money and you think 
why am I doing this? Well, because I love it. And, and I think in every business you are in, even if you work for a boss or uh, there's, there's always some kind of trouble or sometimes, you know, some kind of thing that, that that's not cool about it. And, but then you just kind of learn and, 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 and go on, you know? Right. So, um, actually in these 25 years as well, um, you have a big role actually just for being a woman in, um, almost man's world, like a metal, you know, it was very mm -hmm. different 25 years ago than now. Now it's like yeah. something normal that, uh, yeah. a woman can do grows or being in a, in a metal band. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and these days actually we have these festivals that are like female metal voices and stuff. Do you think that it's better to have actually this or just normalize the role of a woman in music? as metal yeah I think it's a good thing I think um, you know I liked being one of the few women in metal um, because I like being in a man's world I I in general I'm very uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good being friends with men because they think differently than women <laughs> um, less complicated <laughs> um, and um, so I, from when I was young, I was I, my best friends were always uh, boys, guys. Yes. So I like this masculine world, and I and it's still we are outnumbered, right? So there's still less women than men in, in this uh, metal and prog and rock scene, and I like it like that. Uh, however, I do think it's very very cool that there are so many women out there doing such good job you know being singers you know the new generation of singers in metal they are amazing amazing so i like to i like how this is going and and, and you know, not even people who are in the band but also light technicians sound technicians um photographers journalists there are more and more women in the scene and, and that's a good it's a good thing you know yeah totally. a little bit of color <laughs> Great. Well, just to finish the interview and actually letting you have your dinner. Uh, um, okay, so you have done this symphony, I think, which is actually really cool. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the album. Okay, um, so if you have to recommend this to other artists, which artists would you like to see doing something like you have done here? Mm, well, the artists who I. Um, they already done it, like people like Devin Townsend, you know. Yeah. Um, his music is perfect for this this kind of uh, thing, but obviously he, he did this. Yeah. Um, uh, in Plof Div the other day, but um, but maybe bands like Mastodon, you know, like heavy uh, prog kind of heavy shit, like Mastodon or. Um, but, but also Opeth and um, it's just the, the music is just so perfect um, but it's not easy to make really good arrangements for heavy music for orchestral yeah. uh, purposes because you know you have to fill in all the melodic parts and you know it's, it's, a, it's a tough job but if you do it right it can be so epic you know totally